Hello, everybody. So, I'm back for a Thursday night. What fun. I have really been looking forward to this. I'm hoping Barbara's going to make it. But if not, she can catch up on the repeats. But look at this, Marsha, first one here. I love making paper beads. So this is going to be a lot of fun. This is a kick back and relax. You know, we don't take this too seriously. So Marsha and Lisa, hi, sweetheart. And Carol's here. Oh, this is so great. Linda Ramos, hi, sweetheart. It's so good to see you. We've been thinking about you. There's Barbara. She is here. All right. So we're just going to have a good time tonight. And I've got so much to show you. And I'm going to guide you through every step of the process. And if you... Um, well, Kathy Klein is here. Yay! And, and Linda, I hope we'll see your sister sometime soon, too. Or is Lisa your sister? Now I'm confused. Oh, I try to keep y'all straight, but it gets hard because you're in the hundreds. But I've been thinking about you the last month or so with your mom passing and hoping I would see you back. Lisa is. Oh, so, okay. So, I because I knew when I saw Linda and I said, I think I was trying to remember which one exactly was your sister, and it's Lisa. What a sweet face, Lisa. So I, I'm so happy to see you back. We missed you both. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little bit about, about paper beads because they are, when I want to relax and not have to think about anything, they are my go-to craft. So there is Alexis. And so I'm going to try to give you a bunch of hints and tips on how to make paper beads, how to have fun with it, how to do it for practically nothing. And if you want to do per picture perfect beads and be able to just, you know, excel at that craft, this probably isn't it because I do it for fun and relaxation. We are happy that you're back, sweetie. I do it for fun and relaxation. So let me show you a few things. Here is a scissor fob that I made with paper beads. And this pa these paper beads are made with envelope, the safety envelopes. You know how if you get a bill in the mail, the inside can be printed so that people can't read through the envelope to see your personal information. So for a retreat I had a couple years ago, I made, and it's got a little charm, I love sewing, I made scissor fobs for all the retreaters out of the safety envelope paper that they sent me their retreat information in. So it can be a lot of fun. And this is on a little elastic cord. And, oh, you're very welcome, Miss Barbara. And Cheryl Hogan is here. This is wonderful. I'm loving it. And so anyway, this is, it's a great way to mark your your scissors, your rulers, anything like that, especially if you go to sew with friends or go to a retreat or class. Here is, here are some paper beads that I made from a beautiful card someone sent me. And I just turned them into paper beads, put a little charm made with love, and... There it is. Now, these are both done on elastic string, but you can find these little things in jewelry making places, and you can use that, and that way it makes it easy to, easier to put it on scissors and different things. So, the, this is called a scissor fob, F-O-B, F-O-B. So, I know, I know, I hate throwing stuff away. And, you know, quilting is an expensive hobby. 
So it's really nice to have an inexpensive hobby. Oh, don't you love the metallic ones? Well, let me show you a few things. I didn't know how exactly what order I was doing this in, but you know me, I kind of like going with the flow. So I'm going to go ahead and get you excited about making paper beads or fabric beads by showing you some of the beautiful things I've made. This is a fabric bead necklace. And I chose really bright, interesting fabrics and made beads out of the fabric. And that way you can make a necklace from any, whoops, oh, what was on me? Oh, it's my eyeglass thing. But you can make, take any fabric that you, if you have some fabric you love, Make a bead out of it. You'll have it forever. And then I use the different color pony beads as spacers. So this is fabric. And let me show you. Hear that? That shows you by the time you glue it, you roll it and glue it. And I'm going to show you. How do you roll fabric? There's a trick. And by the time you roll it and glue it and then put finish on it, it becomes a nice, solid thing. And, you know, you can put it on with a wonderful, bright colored outfit and show that you're artistic. You know, it's funny. I, was, I tell Mark all the time, we wear uniforms in this life to kind of mark us as we love this, we love that, what, you know. I love my bracelet I got from Missouri Star Quilts because it says I'm either a seamstress or a quilter because it looks like measuring tape. So I love this stuff. Now, I also, while I'm here and showing you things, during the winter, Mark and I enjoy Klondike bars. So I save the wrapper from the Klondike bar and I rinse it off, dry it, and then make beads out of the aluminum. So here is a bag full of metallic aluminum. And if you like the candies, those little Hershey nuggets, that paper is wonderful. What I do is I just take and glue these on a regular scrap sheet of paper and then start cutting the bead shape. But there you can have metallic beads. Isn't that cool? Now, I've tried to do kissy paper. No, no, no. Kissy aluminum foil is so thin that it is nearly impossible to stretch it out without ripping it. So let me show you, before we get into how do we make these beads, let me show you a couple things I've made recently. This is a paper bead necklace. And I made a matching bracelet with it and this is let me see whoops I might have to wait a second somewhere in all of this mess I have the papers oh here they are I was worried about this I've got so much stuff I thought how am I going to find it online I found this that you could download and it didn't have this many strips on it, but I'm so cheap. Number one, this was used paper. Then I printed it out, cut out a couple additional ones, glued it on one of the sheet to fill up the sheet. But I'm going to give you a hint. Take some good markers and deepen the colors because that's what I had to do to get a nice, pretty color out of this. Okay? Now, one thing I want to say, if you like thin beads, then this is great. If you like them thicker, this doesn't quite work. But, you know, with a pair of jeans and, you know, there you go. And I have the matching bracelet. So now I've shown you scissor fobs. And then I will show you this one out of the same... The same kind of bead. I don't have a copy of that one, but 
If you go online, these were free and type in free paper bead prints or something like that. And you will find these online for free. And if they don't come, this one came this way. This one, I think it came. No, I think I had to glue that one too. Because they put too much space in between them and I don't want to waste it. So if they do, do not come this thick, print two out, cut one up and put them, you know, twist and turn to fill up the page. Then print them out on your best ink. It does use ink. But this is what I got. And this one has also been colored. Mary's here. Mary, um, this one has also been enhanced. What I did is I used these art markers and just took and put extra color on the strips. And, and there's another thing I'm going to do with those later. But I looked at this and said, I think the purple. I put the little pony, little pony beads in between these. And I find that it really, it looks really pretty to put the, the purchasable pony beads. Now, this one I just made. And here is, let me find. I tuck in the, the knot on the string, so then I go, oops, which way is top and which way is bottom? But I think this, it goes this way. These were white beads made out of white envelopes and just white paper. Then I took a paint, I took a paint pen, you know, one of these that you shake up, and then you press, and I took a gold metallic paint pen and put the stripes, let me let it focus, and put the stripes on the beads. And some of, in some of the areas of the beads, you can actually see a little bit of the writing, but that doesn't bother me because that just proves it's made of paper. So I made this, and I made a matching bracelet. And I used the gold pony beads in between to highlight the gold. So this is all junk. I did not buy anything but the pony beads and the markers and pens. So I wanted to show you. I haven't made a necklace yet, but these came out so pretty. They've had three coats of finish on them. I cannot wait to turn these into a necklace. I may, I'm not sure how, if I'm going to put white beads in between. I don't know. But I wanted to show you the difference in these beads. Here is a paper bead just rolled. It hasn't been sanded or trimmed or finished. And here is one that's had the finish on it. So do you see it's been all neatly trimmed. It's got a shiny coating on it. And when you, once you get it all trimmed up and coated, it's really cool. It changes it totally. All right. So, and I have, I have a bunch of these that are kind of ice cream sherbet colors. And I'm trying to find the right kind of bead to make that into a necklace. Or I can turn it into um, scissor fobs. All right, so let me put that out of the way. And I will, now what I thought I would do, so don't forget these, always when you type in your Google search, look for free paper bead, what would you call them? Pe free paper bead patterns, something like that. All right, now let me turn on a little light over here and I'm going to guide you through how do I do paper beads, how do I start it, and this also goes for fabric beads. Don't forget about the fabric beads because if you find the right fabric, that's really dramatic, and you can have Go to your stash. What color necklace do you need for an outfit? 
Go to your stash, find the fabric, and go for it. So now, let's start at the beginning. I'm going to back us up just a little, okay? And, oh, these are, there's great ideas for Christmas gifts. You are so right. Oh, you're so sweet. Okay, here we go. Now, I saw this on YouTube about four years ago. And I kept thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it. And so then I said, I've got to try it. And the first thing I did was I used a crochet hook, okay? Because I had never made paper beads before. I got a crochet hook. And then the next thing I did was took a piece of junk mail. And I thought, I want to try to make a paper bead. And so I took junk mail, and then the pretty part of the junk mail, I glued what I, let me go back, hold on, let me step back. I took, I took junk mail, and then put the design that I wanted to show. Because the only thing that really shows on a paper bead is the last inch and a half, two inches. So then I glued this. I think this is so funny because it says, please recycle this envelope. So I am. I'm recycling. Let me show you. Whoops. Come on, focus. Please recycle this envelope. So I'm doing that. And I think that makes a hilarious bead. A little sense of humor. So I glued this on the end because that way the part that's special, I only, I, I only slice it up thin enough that I can make a bead successfully because I've got a lot more of just the blank sheets than I do the pretty stuff or the cool, interesting stuff. I glued it on. Then when the glue dries, I just took regular scissors and cut strips. Now, you can use all kinds of paper cutters, and I'm going to show you how to do, use two other types of paper cutters, but this is my favorite thing. I don't know about y'all, but I love cutting with scissors, and I can sit in the evening watching TV with Mark, and I cut my paper strips. And what I try to do, so much junk mail comes in, that once a week, I try to Go, well, every day I go through the junk mail, anything worth saving for beads, I take and put in a pile. And then once a week or so, I'll go through and make my strips. So what I do, this was the inside safety of an envelope. And this, this piece of paper was a copy from my doctor's visit that I didn't need. Boy, they waste a lot of paper. So... Now I just use it as a base to make my bead. When you, if you go on YouTube and look up paper bead making, you will find the longer the strip of paper, the thicker the, the paper you're using determines how thick the bead will be. The shape of the paper determines the shape of the finished bead. But to start out on this, this is so easy. Okay, since I just cut these up, let me show you how I first started out, okay? Oh, thank you, sweetie. All right. Here we go. So here is the strip I cut. Now, I see here that it didn't quite meet evenly. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and trim this now. Because it'll save from trimming later. Okay, now I just use a bottle of white glue. And I glue a little bit more than some people do because I don't like my bead to slip around. Now you can use a, you can wind a bead on a toothpick. You just go like this, get the bead, whoops. Let me try this one more time. Okay, you just... You lay it on top of the paper, you spin 
spin the paper and get it started. Okay, so that we'll sh I'll go ahead and make the whole bead on this toothpick to show you how little it really takes in far as far as equipment. But you just, I like to put the glue on pretty soon after I start rolling it. And the reason for me, some people only put glue at the bottom. Well, that saves on glue and it keeps your hands and the bead neater and tidier. But I don't like my beads to in any way come apart. If you only put the glue on at the tip, then your bead can slide over. You know what I'm saying? And I like to keep the bead nice and tight. Also, when the glue dries, it creates a firmer bead. And I like that. Okay? I feel like I have to do less with the coats of finish. Now, I'm going to do one of these strips on a crochet hook. And the reason I use crochet instead of knitting is because the knitting needles I had are so long. But now I just take and put run a little a little string stream of glue right down the paper and then I start rolling it and once it catches on that glue it does pretty good. Whoops, I haven't done this in a while. I have a an actual bead roller. But you kind of have to hold on to it and roll it tightly. And whoops. <laughs> this is why if you end up liking this, I recommend an official bead roller. And here we go. We're down near the end. And if you need to straighten it up, if you got a little bit off, straighten it as soon as you see it. Because that glue will set the paper up. If I were to try to peel this apart now, it would totally fall apart because the glue makes it so wet. So now you've seen a bead made on a crochet hook and you've seen a bead made on a toothpick. Now, so when I decided I really liked the bead making, the first thing I, I did and you can see with my hands get so full of glue, these can get kind of messy. I keep a paper towel near to clean off my hand. But now let's roll the same kind of strip on this bead roller. And this is a wooden handle. And I got a bunch of these grips, the jelly grips. And I put this paper. I like it because, see, this has a slit there. For you to stick the paper in. Sometimes they might get gunked up with glue. Just take something thin and run it through and clean it out. All right. And this is a wood handle, so don't try to get this too wet because that wood will swell. But you slip that paper in, then you start rolling. And then I run a strip of glue down. Take my finger and rub it down, and then here I go. And see how I started to get a little off, so I slide it over right away. I hold my finger and slide it so that it's nice and neat. And if I didn't glue all the way down, it would stay like that until I put the decorative finish on. And I don't want to take that chance. Now, I didn't have enough glue down near the bottom to hold this good. So I'll put a little touch more glue. Be careful, only use just enough glue to do the job. If you do too much glue, one of the problems I have with this style bead roller, hi Charlene Lawson. One thing I have with it, a problem that I have with this style bead roller is the metal tends to get, the paper can get stuck on it. As soon as you're done rolling that bead, I would get that bead right off because as the paper gets softer and it will stick to this and see, this is not like a stainless steel. And the other thing I don't like about this one is the fact that you have to use your fingernails and carefully try to get that bead off. And that's just, that's hard. When you get older like me, our fingernails are a lot softer and we can ship them with this method. So now I've shown you this method. Now my favorite roller is this one. Now 
when you go to get these, you can get a set of these for about $10. And they have different size shafts so that the center of the bead will be different. Now, this is my favorite. I wish they would make one more size bigger. They have a green one, and it's even smaller. But I don't want it too small because I want it to be easy to string these beads on various thread weights. So now I'm going to take the same kind of strip. Let me get a good one. Here we go. Same strip. And let me show you why this is my favorite. Oh, and just so you know, you can get this from Fire Mountain Bead Company. Let me go ahead and type that in. Fire, whoops, all done. Yep, a cotter pen works well too. Good job, Barry. Fire Mountain uh, Jewelry, I think. I think it's it's a jewelry making company, beads and all of that. And they run about ten dollars. Let me see. They run about ten dollars. And I am going to be ordering another one because honest to goodness, I don't want this. If this were to break, I'd be lost. But this is purple. It's my favorite one. Because I don't want to make a bead that's really tiny. That's too small for my hands. I have big hands. So here we go. This, I love it. It has a stainless steel pen right here, which means you can more easily get these off the roller. And see how it has that slit right in it? I stick the paper in. I put the part that I want to show goes down. And it goes on the end away from me. And I... Put the paper in that little slit where it catches so good. I roll it a couple turns, and then I come in with my glue. And then take my thumb and just smooth it down and roll it up. And if it starts getting uneven, then just push it. Push it on something, and it'll go back in order because the what i'm showing you right now these are called bugle beads or tube beads and these are pretty straightforward and pretty easy and straightforward to make there it is now what i love about this roller number one instead of turning the whole thing i just turn this do you know how nice and easy that is on your hand, especially if you have carpal tunnel? This is a wonderful tool. You just hold it like this and turn it. Then when I'm done making the bead, I push. I push this plunger out, and it pushes the bead right off. So I don't remember the name of the woman who invented this, but um, she, this, this is now sold mainly on Fire Mountain. And I tell you what, it's the best $10 you'll ever spend. Makes it so, so easy. And here is the beautiful uniform bead. Now, I'll show you later. What do you do? Okay. If you were a perfectionist, then your beads would not be partially hollow like this. This comes from me just cutting it out and not having it perfectly straight. But that's just, that's just the way I like that, doing it. I like sitting and cutting them by hand, and I don't care if they're perfectly straight. Now, the other bead I'm going to show you is called a barrel bead. And these are ways you can try to get to make a round bead and what this is is you take a long piece you can use a short piece but this is a long piece of mail that I got I don't know what it was but it was just a, a piece cardboard mailer or um, not really cardboard it's a little lighter than a postcard okay so see how this has oh yeah Mary that would work great but now, if you look at this, it's not perfectly straight. 
but that's okay with me because you know you can buy ready-made strips that have been cut out on a computerized machine and then you would have a perfectly even bead but i don't want to buy an expensive machine and i don't want to have to sit and and operate it i just like doing this from my couch so now since this is a long angled strip a long skinny triangle see how the sides start to come in and that's what's going to give it the barrel shape okay and I've got the glue on. And you'll notice when the paper is thicker, I touch, rub, and kind of get the glue a little bit drier and tacky. Because when the paper is thicker, sometimes, see how that paper is sticking up? Let's see. See how it's sticking up? Now, to get that paper to lay down, sometimes I take it like this and kind of, pre-roll it to get to break it break it down a little bit so that when I do finally finish now it is stuck also you notice I rub every bit of glue left on my hand on the bead and it wasn't I didn't quite line this up but it's pretty good but I rub any little glue left on my hand because that will do the process of starting to seal it. This is called a barrel bead. Hello, Maggie. So nice to have you here. Now, there are different beads. There are round beads. A round bead would be made with a strip that maybe only got this wide. This wide and down. But I don't often make round beads. I thought I had one here. Oh, no. Okay. Now this, the fact that we talked about making the beads, what I do to have a drying rack is I get a piece of junk styrofoam from a package or a box, and I get nice... Um, toothpicks not the ones i try to get the nice round ones and then you can glue them into the styrofoam and this is the best kind this is the kind that's plasticky it won't it doesn't fall apart like if you go like this it doesn't crumble off i love this and it's got a little bit of weight and this is four layers thick this is the best one i've ever had then i put toothpicks in it and you can, I put a finish, I put some water-based polyurethane, dip the toothpicks in that, and then put them into this. And it kind of, it held them, most of them it, it holds for a good while. But here you'll see all different, there are the barrel, be I mean the tube beads, or um, what are they called again? Bugle beads or tube beads. Then you see different kind a barrel beads. This one, whoops, see how short and round that barrel is? I love these. These are so cute. And what I did is I had a mailer that had, was, when you opened it all the way out, it was about two feet long. And I, it was hard to cut them, but I did it. And that's what makes that really big fat bead. And I think that's really cute. So, and this is just part of the mail. I love the color. And I like to look for color and design. This is a pale yellow right here. But you see all the different, you know. Now, if you were to get a book or something that told you, you can make a double-ended uh, barrel. It comes out with two long triangles that are hooked together at the top. But for me, I'm happy with these. But now this is thicker paper. Okay, this came from like cover of a catalog or something. I'm going to show you what do you do if you have thick paper that doesn't want to behave. So let me... What I do then, I use white glue 
The reason I use white glue is it's cheap, cheap, cheap. But let's say I get up to the top and it's thick paper and I'm having a hard time getting it to stay. That's when I pull out the big guns and I use some of this tacky glue. Tacky glue has a lot more instant stay power. See right there? Now it is... There is the opening, and it's glued down. And sometimes it even takes twice to get that to lay down. And then I put it on the, the toothpicks. And a lot of times I'll just put this on my hand. I do not leave tacky glue open like I do the white glue because it will dry up too fast. And tacky glue is a lot more expensive. But look at this. This was a, a real heavy piece of paper. Very, well, you can see how thick. It's just like cardstock. And it has a glaze on it. When the paper is shiny and thick, it's going to give you a fit in sticking. So what I'm going to do is go back to where it's coming unraveled. I put the tacky glue on. And then I slowly roll it up. I slowly roll it up because as the glue is exposed to the air, it gets even tackier. Okay. And then I take the extra glue and I rub it on that section so that it helps to hold. I rub it starting from a half inch back. And now look at it. Now it is stuck. So the only time I use tacky glue, if you can afford it, go for it. But the only time I use it is when the end won't quite stick. And sometimes with the beads, you'll put them on here and you'll find later they didn't quite close. Like this was a piece of junk mail that has a shine on the paper. See that shine? That is tricky to get regular white glue to stick on it and that's why sometimes you'll see me rub it back and forth I'm trying to have it get a little dehydrated and then it will hold together better okay so now that's stuck so when I go to take the beads off I let them dry on here for a few hours or overnight then when I go to take them off that's when I check to see if any ends opened up like look at this right here that opened up a little bit. So if I've got any glue on my hand, I will glue it back down. But that's what you look for. Because that this often happens. And it's not your fault. It's just the way the paper is. And I'm hoping this will hold. And now I'm going to take this glue and run it. All, what's left on my finger, run it all over. That helps it stay down. So then it'll stay on here for maybe till tomorrow. Then I pull them all off. And then from there, they go into a sandwich bag or a gallon Ziploc bag. And they stay in here until I'm ready to do the next step. So now let me bring you back up. <laughs> all right. Are there any questions that you have for all of this? You can see now why that bead roller is wonderful. If you're like me, I have pretty bad arthritis in my hands. They're pretty mangled up. Look at, you see what I'm saying? So anything I can do to make it easier on my hands. But what I'm trying to do with this bead work is to show you how to do it without spending money to see if you like it first. And I love it. I love, let me tell you what I love about it. I love the feeling of rubbing the glue on the paper. I even like peeling the glue off my fingers when I'm done. I, as a little kid, did you ever put glue on your hand and let it dry and then peeled it off? Yeah, I like that too. I'm very tactile. So, it, you know, I like that experience. I like the feel of the paper through my hands. And let me take... This bead roller, this is another thick, it's a thick cardstock weight piece of paper. I'm going to come in here, and that's another reason that I glue all the way down, because I use junk mail, 
And unless it's really thick or really shiny, I use it. And I'm going to show you, what if you get a mailer in that has beautiful paper, but it's really shiny and really thick? I've even got a tip. Because if you use a shiny, thick piece of cardboard, you'll have a mess of a time getting the bead to actually make. Now, see, I put the glue on so early and kind of touched it. Because the more you touch it, the stickier it is. And then I rub my hand around it really good. I just do this and get all the glue off. And so far, so good. So then I push it off using this and stick it on my dryer. Now, let me show you. Okay. So let's say you get this blue and it's really shiny. See the shine? You're welcome, Marsha. Do you use white glue on fabric as well? Yes, I do. Um, just because, let me show you. The white glue goes on sale just about everywhere for $12 to $14 around Christmas. I've had, now this one's getting low. It's about this much left. Don't worry. I've got another whole gallon. But I've had this coming up on two years. And so it lasts a long time. And I buy it by the gallon. Anybody can afford $12 to $14 for a gallon. And then just make sure you keep it well closed. If you want to, you can even store it like this if you can stand it up just to make sure it doesn't get too thick. But what if it got a little bit too thick? It actually makes it easier to do the bead making, but you can always thin it with a little water at a time and then shake it. So now, so that's why I use white glue, because that's my price. <laughs> I've told y'all how cheap I am. <laughs> but anyway, let's say you get a beautiful, look at that blue, and then it's shiny. You know what I've done with this? I took the corner of it and worked and got it and peeled it apart. Now, a lot of times they don't come apart really nice and easy. The little bit got left behind. But what I'm trying to do with this is to get a non-slick side. Because look how, see the texture on this? If I can separate this. And then, let me see. Let me get this. If I can separate this good enough, and then I cut it, I'm going to show you how much easier this rolls up. And see, I just went ahead and cut it into the triangular shape so I can use the whole piece to make a bead. And now I just come in here. Okay, I start, get it started rolling, and then come put the glue on and start rolling. Making sure you try to keep it even because the prettiest barrels are rolled evenly so there's a smooth transition. And because the paper was split in half, I have a non-sticky side. It rolls so much easier than the whole heavy thing would have rolled. I've tried rolling that stuff before. It always comes apart. It's hard on my hands. But I still, isn't that a beautiful color? So that's how I look at junk mail. I look and say, hmm, that's awfully pretty. Now, look at this. This is a postcard that I got from Pineapple Fabrics, and it's pretty thick. If I want to, I can separate and try to separate that, and you just pick at the edge until it kind of gets bent up like this. Then you can grab each side like this and just gently, slowly start to peel it open. And you're going to say, Deb, that's crazy. Well, 
For somebody, it might be. But for me, it's fun. And I have figured out how to take something that would just be thrown away, end up in the landfill, and now the shininess of this paper will be an asset because it has enough of the rough stuff to actually stick. Oh, I've never tried Christmas wrapping paper, but I bet you it would work pretty good. So that's what I'll do with this. Oh, let me show you this. If I just used it this small, it wouldn't be much of a bead. So this is what I like to do. I like to start cutting a triangle, but leave the end a little wider. Then when I come to cut the rest, I start nice and narrow, and I try to cut leaving this end the same width as the, as the narrow end of the piece I already cut. And then while I'm cutting this, right, I stop right that moment. I glue these two ends together. And now I've got a long strip. And by the time I finish cutting all these, the ones I've already glued first are dry enough to roll into a bead. So, yeah. Oh, gosh. In fact, if, you, if you're not as cheap as me and you want to go and buy scrapbooking paper, there's ways you can do that that are cheap. What you can do is take scrapbooking paper and cut it into strips about two and a half inches by the width or length of the paper. Glue them on to a piece of junk mail like this. Glue it on the side. Then you can make the cuts. And those, to do it that way, to make sure you get the most for your money, you would make the bugle beads or the tube beads. If you want to make the long strips, you would have to cut the long triangles out of the sheet of scrapbook paper. It would be a lot more expensive that way. Now... Let me show you somewhere under here. Here it is. And here is, I did it part way to show you this. Now, I don't really like termites, but rolled cut and rolled up. I won't be noticing it's a termite. But this card, I did the same thing. It was very slick. I mean, look at the shine on that. You can't get that to stick especially as thick as it was, but now I've torn it into half, and I've got two rough absorbent sides that will hold the glue. So you see what you do? And because, I, you know, that yellow is so pretty, and uh, so that's how, and you get twice as much. So I do that. Now, here is another mailer we just got. And the card thing came off. But look at all of this color. That's a lot of color. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to start making a very narrow end. And then I'm going to get wider until it's just over an inch at the top. Now I've just cut a long triangle that will make a barrel bead. So it's hard to cut on these long ones, but you can do it. You just have to practice. And I've been doing this now for three years, so I've gotten a lot better at cutting straight lines. But if you don't get your line perfectly straight, you can try to even it up. You can see right there, that wasn't quite the best angle. But you know what? While I'm winding it up, I'll kind of push it and pull it to get into line. You know? Hi, Alberta Conti. It's so nice talking to you. Hello. She's our Alberta from Maryland, if I'm not mistaken. So anyway, you can see where this mailer is going to give you a lot of color on your beads. And then if you have a black outfit... This would make a very pretty bead. And don't worry about the writing on it. Because remember, 
by the time it's rolled up, you just see color. Once in a while, you'll be able to notice a word. But if you do that, that just means that you can prove it was paper. And uh, people get really tickled. You made that out of paper? In fact, I've got a funny thing to show you. Let me see if I can find it here now. I've got this whole pile. This was a direct TV ad in the Sunday paper, and I love the color. So I took it and cut it up and put it on individual scrap papers. This is one of our Sunday live stream agendas, and I just glued it on that, and then I'll make bugle beads out of that. Let's say you have an alimony check. And it's a lot of fun to keep that alimony check to remind you of how glad you are that that X is an X. And so I take these, and after I've done the online depositing and waited the proper length of time, I will then glue this on, glue this on a sheet of paper and cut this into a bugle bead and have a real nice celebratory necklace. Don't you think? <laughs> so, and one more time, I wanted to show you the envelopes and what I do with them. And I like the ones that most of the time, these envelopes with the safety paper, you can just open them right up the side. And I've made so many safety paper um, beads that I had started going ahead throwing it away, throwing them away. But then I looked and on Etsy, I saw safety paper bead necklaces for $40. Now, I don't know if they actually sell, but holy moly. <laughs> So what I do is let me let me hold on just a second. This one has a, here we go. Here is what the safety paper envelopes are more likely to look like. So let me show you how do I use this to make beads. Okay, I'm gonna tilt the camera down. Oh, thank you, Miss Alberta. Yep, I tell you what. What my ex put me through, I enjoy turning that into a necklace to wear. Every time I wear that necklace, I think, uh-huh, cost you, didn't it? <laughs> so anyway, but you see, you take and you, like I told you, two and a half inches is all you need. And I leave this edge. I always, I try to cut it so that this waste paper is where I'm going to glue it. Then I come up here. And I cut off the edges that are white because that's not going to work, okay? So now I cut across here. And this is what I do. Mark always brings me the mail, and I go through, and if I'm going to save part of it to make paper beads, this is what I do. So now I've cut off the white parts, and this is wide enough that I can make two long strips for safety paper bugle beads. And if you'll notice, this one is a little bit wider because it's all good paper. This has got this edge. And I don't need all of this edge. It dips down like this. So I come across here, trim that extra off. Okay? Now let me show you. So now, out of that envelope... I've got three strips to make beads with, okay? And because this one's shaped funny, this will be the part that, let me show you. All right, here's my scrap paper. I come in here and I put glue, a good amount of glue. And on this scrap, this part will be the part that gets glued down. And I kind of overlap it by that so that the bead is a little stronger. Then I'll take a piece of this and I cut it from this point on. So I estimate it about that. Then I come and put glue on this 
so that when I overlap these, it's glued here, and these pieces are glued together. And there we go. Then after the glue dries, I will come in here and cut my strip. Now, at this point, at this point or even this point, you can take markers and you can color this. Let's say you want a plaid. But you could you can leave them like they are or come in and have a little fun and do a light coloring. Then you can come in with another color. And these have lines or shapes, and you can just color in that line or shape. Okay? Then you could come in with a color and go across this way, making a plaid. But you can color them any way you want, or leave them like they are, or color the whole thing one color, and the lines will show through. But there you go. So now you've got the material to make a bunch of beads. And you decide how wide you want to cut them. Because this will make a bead, a, a tube bead, that's a little less than an inch long. Okay? All right. So now I've shown you how to cull the junk mail. Because that's important. You don't want to keep everything. And all the little scraps of that, they're thrown away. I do not use these. Uh, they don't stick to glue. So if I had one that had that, I would take and cut that part out like this. Throw this part away. Then I would cut across here, cut across here, and I could glue it on this way or this way, and then I would have the other whole piece. So i have just kind of, whatever way works for you, these are little ways that I've found to cut them up. All right, so now I've shown you how to do these mailers. I've shown you how to peel things apart. Um, these, the insert letters, are wonderful to glue the specialty paper on. This looks like, oh, yellow. If it had a little bigger of an area, you could take and cut this part glue it to another piece of paper, make a um, bugle bead or tube bead with it. But I tried, there's so much out there. And so I try to remember that, you know, sometimes it's better to have that as the base. Then this came, and this had a pretty blue, and it's shiny, but it's thin. See, it's very thin. This would make a nice bead. I'll probably cut it in half, glue it on paper, and make that. Then these stupid you vehicle service notic notification. Eh, no junk. So I would cut this in half down this way, put it on, glue it on paper. I've got nice pink beads. And look at this. All this color. Same thing. And I don't know if this has got enough color to be worth it. So that's how I always look at it. And then if I don't use it, I throw it out. I don't feel a bit guilty. Now, here is we went to a campground, and they gave us a map. And we decided after looking at the campground, we don't think we'll go back. But that, you know what? I like this paper. And it's shiny, but it's thin enough that I can get it to stick easy. It's shiny and thick that's the problem. So anyway, and I may at the very last bit have to use a little bit of tacky glue, but I would take and make long strips out of this and get some nice, nice barrel beads out of this. All right, so now I've shown you that, and like with this bead right here, that's where I got, see these pink, pinky red? That's where this came from. So... You know, you might think, well, that looks like junk. But then once you roll it, it's kind of pretty, you know, even if it has a few letters on it. So that part's fun. So now I've shown you all of that. 
here is an empty. I keep several of these because when you get used to doing the um, bead making, you are fast. And you'll fill all this up watching your best show. <laughs> so anyway, so see that? Then Mark was thinking I would be done at 8.30, but I'm having too much fun. You can come or go as you want, but I want to keep going and telling you about this because this is fun. Also, think of any questions you might have. Type them in all caps if you can. It helps me notice. See these little inexpensive um, skewers? They're wonderful because let's say I've trimmed this bead up. I need to show you how to trim the bead up. But when I trim the bead up, I can put the bead on this and then brush my finish on. And then put it, this I like to, I use my, this great big one right here. When I put my pretty finish on, you see how close I've gotten them. And once I put the finish on, then I take and put and go, Doop. oh, you couldn't see that. Hold on. Let me try it again. So I take a skewer and put this on near the tip. And I brush my finish on. Okay. In fact, I can show you real quick some of that. My favorite, I used to use Mod Podge, but they kind of stick. So I decided that I would switch to triple thick. And I really do like this. There is a, a specific kind for paper bead making, but it's a little expensive. And yes, you know, I'm cheap. So I put a little bit of this finish right here. And then I take a paintbrush and dip it nice and good. Load up the brush with it. Then I take and, whoops, brush it on. And I get a little bit down in the ends. And brush it one way and another way. If you need to get a little bit more finish. And this does not remain tacky like Mod Podge. So I'll take this and I'll put it on the end of one of these toothpicks and just quick boom, boom it off. Okay. Now that end didn't have Mod Podge on the or finish on the end. So I'm just going to carefully. Make sure that end is coated. And then, make sure it doesn't stick. I'll move it around just a little bit and put it back. Now, I will end up putting three coats of the finish on it. But I just thought I would tell you, this is just all junk and toothpicks that I made. And it works really nicely. All right. But there's a step you have to do. There's a step that you have to do first. And that is trim your beads. And there's a couple different plaid beads. Yeah, I mean, you can do all how difficult are the other steps. Well, that's what we're going to look at. Now, what I'm going to show you is if you want to cut your paper and you don't want to do it with scissors, you can use one of these inexpensive they're about nine dollars and they have the little sliding blade and you can use this to cut your strips okay so there you go you can cut your strips with this the other thing that i asked for for christmas last year because i love paper bead making so much i asked for guillotine paper cutter and let me show you, with these, you line your paper in there, and then make a nice, swift cut. And then, I'm going to cut the next one short, because it has a short piece left. And, and this was about $30, maybe. And it definitely makes fast work. If I have a lot of cutting to do, this definitely just keep your hands out of the way. And I thought I would show you this safety paper is very dramatic. Isn't that pretty? 
So those are your cutting methods. And this has a little lock right here. So lock that up. Then, so now you've made your beads and they're dry. Well, what comes next? Let me show you. But the edges often are a little messy, a little not very thick, a little bumpy messy. So what I do, you can do two different things. You can take your pair of scissors, lay them on the end of the bed, or end of the bead, and just slowly turn them while you've got the, the scissor blade. See the scissor blade laying on them? And this will end up giving you a very nice, neat edge. Okay. Then same thing with this one. Now, sometimes if the bead is too skinny and long, I'll just cut a hunk of it off. But then you just lay the blade flat on top of the bead and nip and turn, nip and turn, nip and turn like this. Okay. And then you'll end up with a nice tidy bead. Now, let's say that you're tired of your hand getting sore from doing that, you can always get a little vibrating sander and this is going to be loud. I apologize, but I want to show you this too. The vibrating sander and let me get in a little closer. end of it. And it'll take the bead from messy like this. Come on. Again. I'm waiting for my camera to focus. There we go. It'll take the bead from being a little messy like this to much neater so, but this, it's kind of hard to hold on to the bead, and it's very loud. But I used to try to hold it in my hand, but the vibration was just, because it just, it doesn't move like in a circle. It just vibrates back and forth. And I made sure to get some really thick sanding discs. So, you, you can either sand it like that, and I do it outside, or you can do the cutting method. And then I want to show you what step I do next. Let me, whoa. And I was going to tell you, I've got at least two, whoops, let me come back. Let me zoom back out. I've got at least two more of these bags. This is how many, I've got four or five, maybe even six bags of beads. And I'm anxious to get them finished so that I can do something with them. And, but let me show you. Jeannie, who belongs to our group, sent me the sweetest, sweetest card. Oh, and you see that Mark just took, put padding on this table, and used one of these ratchet things to hold it upside down because I didn't like the vibrating in my hand. That was too much. But and, and it won't hurt you because it just vibrates. It won't hurt you, but you have to hold on to the bead good. Now, after you have smoothed out your bead, it'll look like this. Nice and smooth, even. I take a magic marker of some type some kind of marker, and I come in, let me bring you back to show you this, okay, I want the bead to look much neater and tidier, okay, so I take the bead and some kind of marker, and I color the end, I stick this in the inside and go around, 
and then I come and do the edge. Okay, so, and that will make, it will give it much nicer finished. Whoops, I'm sorry, I didn't do it where you could see it. But, yeah, and just color it in. Color it in, good. But these are a bronze metallic paper. And it was so pretty when Jeannie sent me that card. I didn't want to throw it away. So when I finish getting these all trimmed and the ends oh, and the ends colored in, then I'm going to take and make a necklace with them with these matte gold beads. And I thought that would be pretty. And it's a way for me to remember that sweet thing that Jeannie did sending me the card. So... I kind of like saving sweet things. Now, this I got off of Amazon, and it's a jewelry making kit. And it wasn't that expensive. I got it for Christmas. I asked Santa for it last year for Christmas. And it has pliers and little jump rings and earring things and stuff like that. And I, I do enjoy that. And there are times I really need the pliers to help pull things through. So, I've shown you how to cut it. Then, I have all these markers in a container so that I, whatever color the bead is, I can find a marker that matches. Then, I also, for fun, have some gel pens because I might try to start trying to draw little designs on the beads. I don't know. It might be too fussy for me. We'll see. All right. And I've shown you these markers are wonderful for coloring the ends of the beads because all of these colors work. And let's say you don't have a good color, then go black or white for the end. Although, to do white, you'd have to have a paint marker, and they're more expensive. All righty. So now, after I've cut up all of these strips, then I get baggies or grocery bags or whatever, and I put my strips in. And then I haven't tried the ink tents. I should I should consider, although they're so expensive, I think I'll save them for fabric. <laughs> but here are bunches and bunches. I have about four or five bags of these so that anytime I get in the mood to make beads, I just grab a bag of this, my bead roller, and glue, and I'm ready. All right, now, I told you about, okay, and the triple thick, let me tell you, I loved, I had a chance to get these on sale last Christmas from Michael's, and it was a set of 12 of them, I and they were so cheap that it worked out, because you would think, oh, you pay extra to get them in the little bottles, but watch for a sale before Christmas. The nice thing about the little bottles, they don't go bad. Sometimes in the bigger containers, it can you have a hard time getting the lid off, number one. And, you know, with this, you just can flip it up and squeeze out what you need, and you're good to go. So I am very happy with these. All right. But I put a lot of things on my Santa list. So what I was going to show you real quick is... This is a baggie of beads that have been rolled but not evened up. And you can kind of tell. You can see the ends look a little messy. Sometimes the beads will not be balanced. Like this one has a lot longer of an end than the other end. And then here is a baggie of beads that I have sanded. These are all I sat out the other day in the garage with the headset on and sanded these. So these are ready now to have the finish put on them, to be colored, whatever. The blue ones are safety paper. And they're just all different kinds of beads. And after I put the finish on them, then I'll sort them into a bead container like this by color. I have several of these, and I'll sort them by color so that if I go to make something, boom, they're right there, ready to go. All right, so now I think I'm looking at my list, but I think the only thing I have left to talk about is how to make 
fabric beads. Well, I came up with something today because it's kind of hard to glue fabric onto paper. You can do it, but it, it, it's tricky. I like using, if you use liquid glue, the paper can get all wrinkly. Then you'd have to probably iron it to because you don't want the fabric to be wrinkly. And then I thought, well, I could use a glue stick, but they don't, once they dry, sometimes they don't hold on good. So today I was thinking, oh, I hate to do this, but I might have to use, let me put my brush in water, um, but I might have to use um, a fusible. But then I thought, Will that work? I think I could put fusible on the back of the fabric, like steam a seam two that's two sided, then peel off the paper backing and then lay it on a piece of paper. Then while I was getting ready to get a piece of that, I said, what if I took freezer paper, iron freezer paper onto the back of it, cut it in strips like this, and then glued that to scrap paper. And let me show you, because, you know, honestly, if you were to try to just take fabric without stiffening it, you would have a mess of a time rolling it into a bead. So if you can somehow get it adhered, adhered to a really good background, then you can make a bead really well. And you could even make the barrel beads. But I'm going to take a strip of this and let's see how the freezer paper, whoops, that freezer paper isn't all the way across. Yeah, here's one. The freezer paper ironed on really well. Let's see how this works. So remember, the pretty stuff goes down at the bottom and side away from you. You're just looking at this. Okay, so then I'm going to, let me put my glasses on. All right, and sorry, you can see all the wispy little strings from the glue, but that's okay. So I'm going to stick this paper in here like this. And, okay, whoop, whoop. sometimes if the paper's too thin, um, Barbara, yeah, I'm not going to try my ink tents because they're so expensive. Oh, you, I already answered that. I'm sorry. But thank you for putting it in capitals. It got my attention twice. <laughs> but sometimes if the paper's a little thin and it doesn't want to catch, just fold over an eighth of an inch on the paper. Make it a little thicker. Then it will catch really good. See, that's why I'm taking longer on this because I'm trying to teach you all the little ins and outs that I, let me see if I'm all the way back out. Okay, let me move this back. But, so I put it in the paper bead roller, put the glue on, and now this is a tube bead. And anytime if it gets too, too out of whack, just push it back even. And let's see how this freezer paper is going to work. You just make sure that paper is, that fabric is still glued on that paper like that. And there we go. Now, this, this is going to be a problem. I can see that. So what I'm going to do is tear, cut this part of the freezer paper away because it's already done its job. I've got a nice stiff bead to roll this onto. So now I cut away that last bit of paper, and now here we go. There we are. That is a very nice bead. And on this, I don't think I want to sand the fabric, although I probably could try. So what I will do, I'll let it dry first, and then just go around and trim the edge. Trim it until it's nice and sturdy. Okay? So, freezer paper, which is a lot cheaper than Steamacine, does a really good job. And then I put the bead on here. Now, I want to try one of my red ones because someone was talking about Christmas 
Well, let's see how the red Christmas fabric does. We all like to have Christmas necklaces. So, okay, I've got the paper in right now. Oops, it didn't want to roll again. This paper is thin, so I just folded it over like that so that when I slide it in the bead roller, it holds better. Then start rolling. Okay, and then put my strip of glue down. And I expect that the freezer paper will come off the end again. So this time, to even it up, I pushed out a little bit but held my finger here and it evened it up. And so now I roll, roll, roll. And make sure the fabric is stuck down good. And here. Now, it did the same thing. So it's going to want to come off at the end. So I just go in, trim it off. So that's just fabric. Just that last little bit. Because the paper's already done its thing, which is keep the bead firm. Now I just roll it again. Isn't that pretty? So imagine now. You want to make a necklace for Christmas. And you have these inexpensive gold pony beads. And you put a pony bead and a Christmas fabric bead to make your necklace. Isn't that going to be pretty? It's just that easy. All right. So... Now, since this one, fabric takes longer to dry, so I make sure to put my fabric ones on here and leave them overnight. Okay? So, now I know the freezer paper will work. Just cut it away the last inch so that you'll have a really firm connection between the fabric and the fabric. All right. Well, I like that, and I'm glad it turned out so good because, you know, you know what I mean? If you put if you put white glue on paper and then try to put fabric, it's going to get all wrinkly bunchy, and I wanted it nice and smooth to make a really pretty bead. I think I showed you everything. And we all know that you can get freezer paper from the grocery store. But if you've quilted it all for any length of time, you're probably like me. This is a 30-year-old roll of freezer paper. Okay? So it's nice to know I'm getting some use out of it. <laughs> so that's about that. So let me see. Now I want you to ask me questions. Okay? Another brainstorm. Labels from canned goods. Wouldn't they make cute labels? Oh, wow. Yes. And um, so once your mind gets going, it's amazing what you can think of. And there are sometimes, there are the prettiest papers out there. Credit card offers. Oh, look at, let me show you this one. This was a Christmas card. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. But look at this bead. And it came, it was a Christmas card. So, you know, it is amazing what you can think of. And, and this is what I mean about, like, there might be a letter on it. Just makes it more interesting, I think. But, and this was a safety paper. Look at that. Isn't that cute? Any other ideas? Any other questions? I mean, the, the, the safety paper ones are fascinating. And I'm probably going to take some of them and put a wash on them, a wash of color, and or hand color them to make really interesting things. So what type? Oh, good one, Barbara. Good, 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 good job. Oh, boy. And it doesn't look like I have any right here. I did forget to get that. I wanted to get it. Let me look. Okay. Oh, I don't have any. 
I don't have any of it in here. But my favorite thing is you can get it off like Amazon and you can get a pretty big piece of it. And it comes on a spool and it's this black, um, what do you call it? Black. Can anybody? Yes, you can edge the strip with gold markers. You can also buy, get your paint, get the little bottles of acrylic paint and dip the ends in it. So that would make give it something really pretty. You can use your stamps and stamp the paper. Elastic cording, yes. This is my very favorite. And I bought two rolls of 50 yards. Very cheap. I mean, it lasts forever, and this is my favorite. You can knot it really good. You can get a clear plastic stretchy stuff, but after UV time or time up against skin or makeup, it tends to want to give way. Where this stuff, boy, it lasts forever. So elastic cording is my favorite. But there are all kinds of jewelry-making um, strings out there. I like this uh, the elastic cording also because you can push it through the beads easily. You don't have to worry about a needle and all of that. So I look, thank you for asking. I totally forgot about that. But um, but isn't that sweet? And you can these beads, pearl beads or whatever, are very cheap. Look for them on sale from Joanne Fabrics, and you can buy them pretty cheaply. And it's just fun. It's just fun to see what you can do with these. You can print off designs. You can take a piece of scrap paper and take your markers and color it. Take your acrylic paints and paint something. And then cut it in strips, make a bead. So it's really your imagination can run wild. Okay? All right, I think I've covered every, like I say, you can even use candy paper or ice cream paper. And, oh, he had a mint one that time. I can see that. But anyway, but, you know, oh, I know what I was going to show you. Is I took a white paper bead and you can color it any way, any colors, anything you want. And I'm starting to like the white paper. I used to, especially if it has a sheen to it, it's a nice finish. And with the wonderful junk mail we get nowadays, there's no end to it. So, all right, guys, thank you so much. It's just fun. I love keeping my hands busy. It's so cheap. It's cost hardly nothing. Go to the dollar store and get some Christmas wrapping paper. Try it. I bet you it might come out really good. And you could take these Christmas wrapping paper beads and make garland for your mantle or your Christmas tree, anything like that. All right, guys, you have been wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I will see you Sunday. And let's see what I have done by Sunday. All right, guys, thank you. It was so much fun. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And you can turn junk mail into junk beads. <laughs> I'm going to make something with these or sell them or give them away or something. I'm going to find a purpose. All right. Take good care. Bye-bye, guys. Have a good time. Thank you, Miss Barbara. It was a great idea to do this. Thank you. Y'all are the best. Have a great Friday. Bye-bye, guys. See you later. Oops. Bye-bye. Make beads. <laughs>